Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. To worship our God, let us center ourselves. Let us forget about the day that we would have had. Let us forget about all the things that may distract us in worship the bad interactions, the persons who may have upset us, the things that are worrying us to our core. Let us release them unto God. Focus on God. Concentrate on this act of worship as we come apart together in this place. Let us just spend a few moments in quiet reflection. As we enter this act of worship, I invite our junior choir to lead us in our introit. On this fourth day of Holy Week, we turn our eyes upon Jesus and we look full upon his holy face. We turn to our call to worship, which is printed on page 193 of our prayer book. On this day, our Lord remained in quiet meditation in Bethany, reflecting on and preparing himself for the ordeal he was soon to experience. In the evening, he went to the house of Simon the leper. While there, a woman anointed his body with very expensive ointment because of her deep love and compassion for him. And Judas Iscariot, bargained with the chief priests to betray Jesus to them for money. Let us worship Christ, who for our sakes allowed himself to be anointed, betrayed, and condemned to die on a cross. I invite the congregation to stand as we pray in silence. Jesus said, If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Please be seated. We sing, I take, O cross, your shadow. 
for my abiding place. I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face. As we prepare to sing that song, I want us to reflect this evening on the extravagant love of service. And as we think about the cross, and as we think about Jesus, let us think how we too can serve God with such extravagant love. We sing, I take or cross your shadow. said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. As we continue to meditate on the words of our call to worship, let us sing our opening hymn, the song by Hillsong, the goodness of God. As we reflect on the words of this opening song, it is a call for us to think about the goodness of God that pursued all of humanity, which would have fallen into sin by the act of one man, Adam, and one woman, Eve. And through the redemption of God's Son, all humanity can be made right with God. And that, in essence, is the very goodness of which we sing. So we sing together our opening song, The Goodness of God.
people of God say, Amen. You may be seated. As we sang that hymn, I couldn't help but wonder how the woman who anointed Jesus would have felt. She would have been touched by God. And something within her felt that God had been so faithful to her that she needed to celebrate God in that moment by breaking out that alabaster box and anointing the feet of her Lord. What a wonderful and awesome, extravagant expression of love. As we continue in worship, I invite us to go to God in prayer as we turn to our prayers as printed on page 194 in our prayer book. Let us pray together. O oh God, our Father, you are our refuge and strength, our help in every time of trouble. When we are exhausted by life's efforts, confused by life's problems, and wounded by life's failures, and turn to you for help, you receive us in mercy. When our tasks are beyond our powers, when temptations are too strong for us, and when duties call for more than we can give, we come to you for strength, and you strengthen us. Father, we come to you again. Help us to believe in your mercy and power so that we have the confidence that you will do for us more than we can ask or think. Help us to believe in your wisdom so that we may be assured of your divine guidance at all times and in all circumstances. Help us always to wait upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and shall not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Let us now confess our sins to God and pray for forgiveness. We do so in this moment of silent prayer. O Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood you have redeemed us. Save us and help us we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Let us offer prayers of thanksgiving to our God. Let us pray. Most wonderful, most awesome, most glorious God, we give you thanks for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. We want to thank you especially as we come apart this holy week and reflect on the journey of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the cross. We say thank you that you gave your Son to die for each and every one of us so that we can be reconciled to you, dear God. We know that the death on the cross was an agonizing one, but yet still our Lord and Savior went willingly. Our Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ, 
stood in the gap for all of humanity, took upon him all of our transgressions and sins, so that we, dear God, will not face the punishment that we deserve, but rather that all who claim an interest in the blood of Jesus Christ will be totally and completely forgiven and saved, dear God, and redeemed. We thank you, dear God, that your son was obedient even unto death. And as we today especially think about those characters around Jesus' time, especially the woman with the alabaster box of, of oil, dear God, we thank you for the lessons that we can learn. We even thank you for the lessons that we can learn coming from Judas and even the chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees who teach us how we should not be, dear God. We thank you that we have the opportunity to learn and to grow. And as we think about our discipleship priorities, we thank you, dear God, that we have opportunities to learn how to worship you, to worship you in spirit and in truth in authentic ways. We thank you that we have the ability to grow, and we thank you that we have the ability to serve. We pray that your Holy Spirit this evening will attend our worship and minister to our hearts. Show us how we, dear God, can deepen our discipleship path. So now, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you continue to do, and all that you will do in the future. Hear this, our prayer. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father. We sing our next song, My God is Awesome, as we celebrate the awesomeness of our God, the God who redeemed all of mankind.
Amen. The congregation may be seated. As we now I turn to our responsive psalm, and that will be led by our own sister, Zaria Hinkson. Taken from Psalm 40. And please note your response on the monitors. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. Then I said, here I am in the scroll of the book, it is written of me. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. Do not, O oh Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. Be pleased, O oh Lord, to deliver me. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be appalled because of their shame. Who say it to me? Aha! Aha! As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O oh my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Where without end. Amen. We now turn to our Old Testament reading, which will be read by Micah Aleen. Good night, church. The reading is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 16 verses 1 to 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your honor with oil. Fill your horn with oil as set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself, for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go if Saul hears of it? He will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, do you come peaceably? He said, peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, 
Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance, or not the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as the mortals see. They look on, to, they look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him. Now he was ruy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we take our seal of pause from hearing the spoken word of Scripture, we invite our junior choir to lead us in the anthem.
worthy indeed is the Lamb, the Lamb of God. I invite you as you are able to kindly stand as we hear our gospel reading read for us this evening by none other than Joshua Gajada. Good evening, church. The gospel reading tonight is taken from Mark chapter 14, verse 1 to 11. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For this said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke, it open, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were, sorry, but some who were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, whenever the good news is proclaimed in the world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the 12, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ, O oh Lord. We want to say thank you to all our readers and to our choir for leading us in our anthem. As we prepare to hear the word of God, we sing the hymn 181, shackled by a heavy burden, neath a load of guilt and shame, and then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same. The hymn 181.
Let's go to God in prayer. O oh God, touch us. Touch us wherever we may be on our various walks of faith. May you, dear God, see any brokenness within us and make us whole, dear God. Just as that woman who had that encounter with you would have realized that she needed to pour out her all and to anoint you, dear God, with expensive oil. So may we too respond to you and your touch with extravagant love. May we pour out all that we have. May our tears, dear God, come forth as we allow them to wash your feet, dear God. We pray that as we respond to your touch, that you, dear God, will bring us to a point to serve you and to serve others as we seek to continue your mission, the mission which was begun by the Savior of the world who was born a babe, who ministered, who eventually died on a cross so that all of mankind could be reconciled to you, dear God. So now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be truly acceptable, dear God, in your sight. And may you, dear God, touch your people tonight. Hear this, my prayer, through Jesus Christ I pray, Amen and Amen. I want to do something a little different, and I'm going to invite one person from the youth choir to come forward. I want you to do something for me. So I just need one person from the youth choir to come forward. Yep, anyone, first person. All right, so I have a bag, and in my bag, I have a number of items. I want you to pull them out one by one, and we're going to place them on the table there. All right, so don't go. I want you to tell persons, because people at the back can't see, so I want you to tell them exactly what was in my bag. Go ahead. He has four colognes in his bag. Four colognes was in his bag. Thank you very much. So for those of you who didn't hear, I had some cologne in my bag. And we know that those of us who like to smell good, and I work in a place where I can get on the elevator and I could tell they were persons who were on the elevator because I could smell this rich perfume and this rich cologne lingering in the elevator. And those of us who like nice fragrances, we know that they're not cheap, right? We know that the sweet smelling perfumes and colognes that we like to wear. When we go into Cave Shepherd, I nearly said Harrison's, dated myself all the way, but those of you of that age will know Harrison's. When you go into, what's it called now? Ju Duty Free, Ju Free, Caribbean. And you see the various colognes and you look at the prices, you see they range from what? $100? What's some of the prices that you see on the colognes? $200. Sometimes you even see cologne for $400. And you're wondering, wait a moment, what am I spending $400 on just to spray something and smell nice, right? And sometimes it doesn't even smell good. We know that cologne is expensive. Perfumes are expensive. And in tonight's story from our gospel reading, we meet a woman. We don't really know very much about this woman because Mark doesn't reveal very much. In a similar story from John, we are told that this would have been Mary, who was the sister of Lazarus, who would have anointed Jesus 
with this expensive perfume. In other places, we are told that this perfume would have cost almost a whole day's wages. And so when you think about it, you know that this thing had to be expensive. And here it is. She comes to Jesus and she anoints Jesus' body. One of the things that I find interesting is that this particular reading from our gospel is put alongside our reading tonight from Samuel. And here it is that Samuel goes to anoint David as the successor in new king. And it's this whole idea of anointing that we get because we are told that Samuel would have poured oil on David's head and would have anointed David. And here it is that this woman came with an important task. She came because she was told by the Holy Spirit to go anoint Jesus with this expensive perfume in preparation for what was to happen to Jesus on Good Friday when he was to die on the cross. And as we think about this particular reading this evening, we do so with our theme, the theme of discipleship priority, serve. You would have heard from our steward that for this Holy Week, we are looking at discipleship priority. And as we are disciples in this day and age, and this remind me, young people, do you know what a disciple is? What's a disciple? A follower. We are followers of Jesus. And as followers of Jesus in this age, we have certain priorities. Do you all know what a priority is? You want to tell me what's a priority? Something that you have to do. Give me, some, give me some more. Something important. So we know that a priority is something that we have to do, and it is important. And so over the last couple of nights, and indeed for the rest of the week, we're going to be looking about what are the important things that we need to be doing as followers of Christ. But this evening, we are going to spend just a little while talking about what's important about being in service. <laughs> and as we talk about being in service, I want us to look at three different characters that we find in our reading. We find Mary who would have anointed Jesus with that expensive perfume. We find also the priests and the individuals who would have been there and who would have commented on it. And we also find Judas Iscariot. And as we look at these various people, I want us to ask who really was of service to God. We're told that the woman who came in she came in and she poured out this expensive oil on Jesus. Jesus said that this woman was serving him because she did something that was important, preparing him for what was going to happen on Good Friday. And if you think about it, we don't know about the economic situation that this woman would have been in, but certainly if she would have gone out and she would have spent money for this perfume, we know that it had to be a sacrifice on her part. She had to give something up to God. And so when she poured out that perfume, we know that it was something that she gave from herself. And so when we think about us serving God, the question comes, what are we willing to give up to serve God? For many of us, do we sit down and we count the cost of service? Do we say, you know what, if I say that I'm a Christian, if I say that I'm a follower, does that mean that I'm willing to give up certain behaviors and certain things that I know that are not God-like? 
Does it mean that I can continue as a young person to play Grand Theft Auto when I know that in that particular game, we have glorified in it violence? We have glorified in it behaviors that are unchristian. Does it mean that when I get to school with my friends that, you know what, maybe I need to rethink how I behave. Maybe I shouldn't be gossiping. Maybe I shouldn't be getting into trouble. I shouldn't be getting into fights. And for us as adults, what does the cost of discipleship look like for each and every one of us as we seek to serve God? Does it mean that we are called to sometimes sacrifice the very little that we have, giving up of our time, our precious time, to be in the presence of God and serving and worshiping and helping others. What does the cost of that discipleship look like for each and every one of us? As we think about that woman who anointed Jesus, we see extravagant love. She was willing to pour out from herself and in love to worship God. That is exactly what service is. When you look at the definition in the dictionary of service, you see that to serve means to be a servant. It means that you must be willing to follow and be obedient to God. And so, young people, I want to ask you, what are some of the ways that you can be obedient to God? What are some of the things that you need to do to be obedient to God? Listen to your parents. What else? Read your Bible. What else? Following God's commandments. Anything else? I think you had your hand up, your man. You wanted to say something? Behaving good. What else? So we have praying. Anything else? What about the adults? What are some of the ways in which we can serve and be good disciples of God? Yes. Staying out of trouble. Nice. Sharing. Sharing what? Sharing, also telling other people about, about Jesus. So going out and, and, and sharing with your friends, people that you meet, telling them about Jesus. What other ways can we serve God? Showing love to each other. And that's a big thing. That's, that's one of the big things because we know that one of the two great commandments is that you must love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and you must love your neighbor as yourself. What about here within our church? What about here within our circuit? How can we serve God? And I think there are many ways in which we can move out extravagantly in love and seek to serve God right here. There are many ministries that we have. We have feeding ministries. We have ministries where we go out into the community and we tell others about God. We have the opportunity to come together in Bible study. Our young people have the opportunity to come together in youth group and in youth choir and all the other ways to serve God. And I would say to our young people that as you continue to give of your life and time to God, that the evil one is going to want to pull you away, to distract you from serving God. And as you get older, there may be the temptation for you to pull away from church. But I want you to know that that is just a ploy of the evil one, seeking to pull you away from your discipleship as you seek to follow God. And so I urge you to resist, but rather be like the woman who was extravagant in her love. There were others who were there. They looked at what the woman was doing, and they started murmuring. They started saying, you know what, why is she wasting this good perfume? Could that not have been sold, and could the money not have been given to the poor? They started to cry down her because she was doing work for God, the important work that God would have appointed for her to anoint God's son in preparation for his death. And very often as we serve 
in God's church as we serve in youth group, as wherever it is that we are serving God, there are going to be people who are going to try to pull you down. They're going to try to remind you of your past failures. They're going to try to say, you know what, you see that boy? He is up in the church every single day, but you know what? We know that he used to, in the past, be out there <laughs> pitching marbles and gambling. You see that individual who is there reading that lesson? We know that at school he used to get into fights every single day. There are people who are going to try to pull you down no matter what you do. But the reminder tonight is keep your head down and continue to serve God no matter what people say. And people will say things about you. Focus on God and God alone as you serve God with all your might. And the more that they talk and the more that they say bad things about you, be determined to live your life for God. And finally, as we look at the third character that I want us to focus on tonight, Judas Iscariot. The call is for us not to be like him. Because when Judas would have pointed out to Jesus, you know what? You see that woman right there, why it is that you are allowing her to do that and to essentially pour out her love to you. Jesus had to rebuke Judas. And Judas, because he was rebuked, because he got a prick, because he was corrected, he decided, you know what, I'm going to go and get Jesus. Because Jesus corrected Judas and his way of thinking, he became so offended by it that he decided that he had to tear down, he had to destroy, he had to bring Jesus down a peg. And so he went to the chief priests. And he decided that he was going to betray Jesus for money. When we see persons who are doing good and we chastise them and we are put in our place, let us not have a heart like Judas. Let us be true disciples who are willing to take the chastisement, who are willing to take the constructive criticism, who are willing to humble themselves and to realize where they're wrong. Let us never seek revenge. Let us never seek to want to get even. But rather, let us humbly learn our lessons and celebrate those who serve. So this evening, as we think about Mark chapter 14, we're reminded about what service looks like as a follower of God. We're reminded that we are to be obedient. We're reminded that we are to go and love each other just as we love our God. We're reminded in our service that it will be expensive for us. We will have to sacrifice a lot for God. We're reminded that people will bad talk us but even then, we must keep our head down and continue to serve our God. We're also reminded not to be like the backbiters. Instead of seeking to tear persons down, encourage others in their own ministry. And instead of being like Judas when you are corrected, seeking to get revenge and get even, Seek to have a humble heart and to learn your lesson. This, my brothers and sisters, this, my young people, is the message of Mark chapter 14, a true message of being in service of God, loving extravagantly, and serving God with all that we have. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we turn to our call to commitment.
and discipleship. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your word this evening. We thank you that your word has reminded us that we need to be called into true service as we seek to be your followers here on earth. Dear God, we pray that you will continue to walk with us, that you will continue to guide us, that you will give us a true spirit just like Mary who would have anointed you, dear God. Remove from us all of the backbiting, all of the naysaying, and humble us, dear God, when you chastise us. Hear this our prayer. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. O God of mercy and power, you anoint all those whom you call to special responsibility and service. You anointed prophets, priests, and kings to be leaders among your people and bear witness to your presence by upholding truth and justice. You anointed Jesus of Nazareth to be the savior of humankind. Father of mercies, you inspired a woman to anoint Jesus in preparation for his death and burial. Our closing hymn is a hymn 243, O oh Happy Day, the hymn 243.
on your behalf. Let me thank all of our children and young people that took part in our service this evening, from those who would have led playing the instruments, to our choir in the stalls, to all those who read lessons, and of course, to all those who continue to work with our children and young people who have an equal place within our worship, who we celebrate with and who we welcome as they share on this, our Christian journey, as they go on their own spiritual development. So I want you to just give them a round of applause to show them our appreciation. I invite us now to receive the benediction. As this extravagant love is poured out, anointing Jesus, may we too respond in service. As we go into the world, may we find ways in which we can be of service to others. May we serve God in this world as God's hands and feet. May the love of God continue to hold you together, no matter what you may face. When you feel like breaking apart, may you know that it is by the strength of God that you go. Go in peace, and may the God of peace go with you this day and forevermore. Amen. And amen. Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.